<laughs> Yo, what's going on guys? Rago here from Mack Kite. So I'm just down here in Claremont, Florida and catching up with some friends. Every January I try to come down here and ride some cable and explore, check out the kite spots. And uh, I figured since we're in some warm weather, it'd be a good place to knock out some fundamental videos. So this week I wanted to cover a topic for a question that I actually get all the time. And that is, can I mix brand control bars? And uh, the short answer is, yeah, you can mix most modern brand control bars. Almost everything is compatible. And uh, the last few years, I've been lucky enough to be a gear tester, so I've pretty much tried almost every brand that Matt Kite carries, and I've mixed almost all of them. And for the most part, aside from a few little differences, it is going to work for you, but there are some things that you want to watch out for. Uh, there's actually four things that you want to watch out for. So first is the pigtail connections. Second, I would say, would be the adjustability. Uh, probably more important is, is it a high Y or a low Y? And then the last thing to consider is the safety system. So um, I'm gonna try to keep this video a bit shorter, probably around four minutes, and we're gonna try to get a little more concise, but as detailed as possible on the subject. So the first thing we want to talk about is the pigtail adapters and I've got a couple of bars over here to show you so I'm gonna do a tone bar and a slingshot bar and uh, with these they actually have inverse pigtails so this is a pigtail right here and uh, if this is the case you can see there's a little knot right there that you can change so if your control bar doesn't match up with the kite um, all you have to do is swap that knot and you can change the pigtails. And alternatively, you could also get some uh, PKS universal line adapters or something like that. So another thing to be mindful of is the adjustability. So kites like Slingshot or Cabrina, they'll have uh, three knots on the pigtails where you can set up your kite. And Slingshot has even more on their steering lines, on their center lines, all kinds of settings on the, uh, the bridle of the kite. But the point being here is sometimes when you do change bars, some kites will only have one knot on the steering lines to connect. And what happens here is uh, we've done videos on this, but when you connect close to the kite, you actually add power to the kite. Usually that center knot on your steering lines is uh, the standard knot. And then you can actually reduce some power in the kite by going to the furthest knot out. Uh, another funny thing that I've tested is I have tried like some female control bars on kites. So I did use the Airrush Diamond Bar actually on the FX for a while. And what happens is sometimes those bars will actually have shorter throws. So it took some of the D power out. And there, there were things that I liked, I enjoyed that, uh, you know, the bar was smaller, it was easier to grip, which felt pretty good in my hands. But all in all, usually it's a good idea to match the brand with the bar. Now, the other thing to consider is, is it a high Y or a low Y? And this might be the most important thing. And you never really want to mix a high Y bar with a low Y kite. And when I'm talking about the, the Y or the, the V split, this is where the lines split. So a good example of this is Duotone and uh, Slingshot or Cabrina Liquid Force. So Duotone bars, they're gonna have a high Y and all of the Duotone kites are designed to fly with a high Y, whereas Cabrina, Liquid Force, Slingshot, kites like that, they have a low split where the center line split in the bar. And I've heard that you, you kind of can mix these things, but you're really gonna mess up how the designer planned for that kite to fly. And it can get pretty weird in some kites. Like you would never want to put a low Y on a Rebel. And personally, there you know there are brands that I like to mix and brands that I'll never mix. So just to give you a list of some brands that I do mix, um, Cabrina, Slingshot, Liquid Force, Air Rush. I will mix those all the time. The Slingshot control bar is one of my favorite bars to use in all of my kites. And there, there's funny little things that might change. Like I've noticed that if I use a Liquid Force control bar on a Cabrina kite, it seems to turn a little bit faster get a little bit lighter and likewise if I'm using a uh, Cabrina bar on a liquid force kite uh, you know like the Envy or something that has really light bar pressure that Cabrina bar actually seems to add a little bit of bar pressure and slow that kite down just a little bit and that comes down to like design things so if you look at a Cabrina bar you'll see that the bar floats are actually molded to the bar whereas on a liquid force mission control bar there's actually a split and a small line between the, uh, the control bar and the float. 
And that little extra give actually allows the kite to turn faster and gives it a lighter feel. So little things like that are gonna change, but in truth, nothing that'll really impact how the kite flies. Now, the last point that I wanna cover is safety systems. And this kind of comes back to what year is your kite and what year is your control bar. So if you're using something 2015 and newer, you're probably okay. Uh, but if you have like a 2012 control bar, something like, um, you know, maybe like the Cabrina IDS from 2010 or 2011, that safety system actually will not work as well on a modern kite. So most importantly, you wanna make sure that safety systems are compatible. And in truth, if your bar is older than five years, there's a good chance that those lines are pretty worn and you're increasing the risk of like a line breaking when you're half a mile out which um, I mean, yeah, of course you can just self rescue provided your safety line doesn't break. But I mean, that would be kind of annoying. So I, I usually advise uh, with control bars to just get a new bar every five to six years. So the last thing to consider here really is the safety systems. And what this comes down to is if you have a really old bar or something like you know, a Cabrina IDS system, like from 2010 or something like that, that actually won't be as compatible with modern safety systems. So what happens is you kind of bypass some of the safety and it could it could get dangerous if your bar is old enough. And that really just comes down to what bar and cut you're pairing. So play it safe and just try to keep uh, the years in line, you know, like maybe three year increments and just do a little bit of research on it. So in summary here, Usually it's good practice to match the brand and the year of bar, but you don't have to. It's, it's totally fine to mix brands. So just watch out for these things. Make sure that the pigtails, you know, match up for the most part. Always pair a low Y or V split with uh, the kite. And if it's a high Y, make sure that you're using a high Y bar with a high Y kite. And then after that, just make sure that the safety systems are compatible. And from there, you should be good to go. We mix brands all the time at the shop. It's uh, becoming more and more common and there's nothing wrong with it. So if you feel like checking out a new kite and you have another bar, chances are it's gonna line up. Just look into these four points and you'll be good to go. So hey guys, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. So until next time, this has been Raga.